Hi, I'm Alex Muir, and this is my final year project, Open Fence. It's a livestock fencing system which uses GPS and stereo alerts to attempt to contain animals within the specified boundaries. It uses a web interface to create the boundaries, and these are then transferred via the infield base station to the collars over LoRa networking. This video will cover the significant contributions of this project, as well as the design process and the results and testing that has been performed. But first, we'll have a quick look at why this project was created, and that's to improve cell grazing. The most common form of grazing is continuous grazing. This is where animals are left to roam free in a paddock for an extended period, meaning that any grasses that do grow will still be eaten right down to the ground. Cell grazing changes this by herding animals closer together into small cells and then moving these animals frequently. This has been shown to improve land quality in many ways, including soil carbon, water retention, and biodiversity. However, this method requires additional fencing and labor time to move the animals. This is where Open Fence aims to help by creating virtual boundaries that can be easily moved and requiring only the exterior property fence to remain. This project involved the design of three main components, the collars, the base station, and the web interface. The collar involved designing a custom PCB that contains all of the components required to operate the virtual fence, including the GPS, the LoRa module, the microcontroller, an inertial measurement unit, and the audio amplifier section. The collar enclosure has been 3D printed and is designed to be water resistant with wires from the solar panels coming through the hinges and the two speakers used are waterproof ones. They have a mylar membrane. Running on the collar devices is the Geofence software which produces audio alerts when the collar exits the boundary. It also handles communications between the base station over LoRa, allowing fence locations and collar settings to be updated remotely. The LoRa network uses a star topology where all nodes communicate back to the base station, allowing their locations to be updated on the web server and for new fence locations to be downloaded to them. The web interface allows for easy placement of fences using a Google Maps satellite image to place the maps and then just pressing upload sends it to the collars. The website also allows updating of settings for the collars such as the testing mode or changing the magnetometer biases. Animal movements are also uploaded to the web database and these can be viewed on the website allowing visualization of land use and tracking of real-time animal locations. The first question you may be asking is whether it's even possible to contain animals within a boundary using only audio alerts. It is possible, although it has usually been achieved through training first with an electric shock or some other negative reinforcement. Organisations such as the US Department of Agriculture and the CSIRO in Australia have been researching virtual fencing for about 20 years. However, there's still no commercial products available and research is ongoing. The collar circuit board is based around an ARM M0 Plus, which is a low powered microcontroller. The bootloader for this device is programmed initially using the serial wire debug programming port, after which the Arduino IDE can use the native USB port to program it. Components were selected based on their cost, power consumption, and suitability for this particular task. Before component selections were finalized, the development boards were purchased for a number of them in order to test the components more completely and make sure that they will work, along with checking out the online available resources for each component. The circuit board was designed using KiCAD, which is an open source PCB design tool. The first step was to create the schematic and then from this a PCB layout was created 
using primarily 0603 components. This was then sent to PCBWay in China for manufacturing and assembled by hand in the Monash ECSE laboratories. One of the key features of OpenFence is its directional geofence algorithm. This allows the collar to determine whether it's within the set polygon. If it is outside the fence, it is set up such that it returns the animals in the most efficient way, causing the least confusion. The first step is to determine whether the location is within the polygon. This is a simple program, which only really needs to do comparisons with the other values and isn't particularly processing intensive. If it detects that it's outside the fence, the next function will begin, which calculates the distance to each of the sides. And from this, we find the furthest distance as being the fence side that we are outside of. The bearing to this side is calculated such that it can be compared to the compass bearing and provide the recommended direction such that it would direct the animal back inside the fence. Once they are facing back towards the boundary, the audio is turned off, as can be seen on the right hand side. LoRa wireless networking was used for this project. This is the physical wireless modulation technique, and LoRa uses a chirp spread spectrum modulation, which is a frequency modulation technique uh, where over a set period the frequency either increases or decreases. The key feature that allows it to get much better range than other narrowband uh, wireless technologies is the co-channel GMSK rejection, which allows the unit to operate up to 20 dBs below the noise floor by averaging out the noise over the chirp period. The system uses Radiohead, which is a reliable datagram service, which runs on top of LoRa, and it's set up in a star topology, which allows up to 255 nodes to send addressed, acknowledged messages across the network. In testing, I was able to reach a range of up to 670 meters, measured alongside the train line, which provided a reasonable line of sight. As you can see in this plot, we have the intelligent output power selection algorithm operating, which uses the minimum possible output power of the LoRa module uh, until it can no longer receive and acknowledge, at which point it increases the power uh, and then it will continue trying to reduce that power wherever possible. Another key feature of OpenFence is the tilt compensated compass. This combines data from the three degree of freedom magnetometer with the three degrees of freedom accelerometer uh, in order to provide the correct heading even if the sensor is not kept level. So this ensures that the geofence is reliable. Wake on motion is a feature of the inertial measurement unit which allows it to create an interrupt if a motion threshold is exceeded. This interrupt is used to wake up the microcontroller from its sleep mode and then it can continue processing. So this allows it to operate in its lowest power state whenever the animal is lying down and as soon as it gets up, the system will wake up allowing it to yeah, check its GPS location. In order to provide an estimate of how much power the system could use in 24 hours, it was assumed that a cow spends 14 hours on average lying down and walks 1.5 kilometers. So based on this, it would transmit 750 packets back to the base station. It would spend the majority of its day in sleep mode and there would still be 10 hours where it's moving around and it's been assumed as a conservative estimate that the system is always awake. Based on this, we can see that it would use approximately 460 milliamp hours in a day. As you can see here, the solar testing, in a four hour period, we were able to uh, recharge the batteries approximately the same amount in the late afternoon as well. The base station provides the link between LoRa and the internet. This is achieved using a 
LoRa development board connected via serial to the Raspberry Pi Zero. The Raspberry Pi is running a Python script which is checking the online database for updates to fence locations or settings and is monitoring the serial port for any messages from the LoRa development board. Data from serial messages are extracted and placed into a JSON format for uploading into the database. Whilst it was intended to run this system off a 4.2 volt battery, this was not achieved as there were complications using the boost converter and time constraints just meant that it wasn't able to happen. Instead, a USB power supply was used in testing. The web server was created using the mean stack as it's all written in JavaScript, meaning it was only one language to learn. It uses a MongoDB database and the Node.js execution environment, uh, which runs the Express web app and has AngularJS on the front end. The database has three collections, being the fence locations collection, the animal locations collection, and the animals collection. The fence locations obviously stores the fences uh, with their latitude and longitude and count. The animals list has the list of animals with their uh, settings and information about them. And then the animal locations is linked to the animals. So whenever an animal, whenever a location comes in, it's linked to the correct animal and then stores the location at that time along with the sent data. The website was built using HTML5, CSS and JavaScript. The core functionality of the website is the clickable satellite image which uses the free to use Google Maps API which is again based on JavaScript. Markers are created by clicking on the map and these markers locations are available to the server which then places them into the database. Once the user is happy they press upload to collars which updates the version of the fence and this this version number is being monitored by the base station and will be then uploaded to the collars. In this footage showing the collar exiting the boundary the fence had been set up to follow the white line using the satellite image on the website. As can be seen, it's not until two to three meters after the line that the audio alert is produced. This leakiness of the fence is difficult to prevent due to the GPS's plus or minus three meter accuracy, as well as the varying accuracy of satellite imagery. Additionally to these factors, Livestock may have varying levels of tolerance to the noise with different animals progressing further despite the alert uh, than others. Despite not expecting to do any actual animal testing, I was able to do a small amount of on animal testing for about 20 minutes which allowed me to test the fit of the collar and to see the cow's reaction to having it on. The cow's reaction was mostly positive, it didn't seem to mind, it did try and lift its leg up to touch it, but it couldn't reach it. The collar however was not a good fit and rotated upside down so that it was underneath the cow's neck instead of on top. This was caused by the top heaviness of the collar due to its battery being at the top. This should be moved to a lower location to allow it to be more balanced. In conclusion, the significant contributions I've made to this project are the complete design of the digital livestock fencing system, design the geofence algorithm with boundary checking and directional audio output, I implemented in software the tilt compensated compass as well as the wake on motion power saving functionality and was able to create a intelligent LoRa power scaling algorithm and created the web interface which allows the complete management of the system. Thanks for listening to my presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it.